Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant World Plays. Today we are going to be playing The Elementalist. Oh man, and I'm just in time too. 208, but it's fine. Anyway, um... I just came back from a movie. I saw Spider-Man finally. And if you're wondering if there's going to be a review... Yes! I might get back onto my reviews. I'm sorry I didn't review Toy Story 4, but there was like nothing to talk about it talk about well there's a lot to talk about for the spider-man movie which i will do right after which i will get to right after this video anyway without further ado let's get into it in the last chapter kane finally finally got the name right um kane destroyed the wood nymphs i i don't know if he killed them or not if he if he if he killed them or Oster's father then I'm gonna be pissed. Then he, that that he can't be trusted. Anyway, let's begin. When someone needs your help, will you rise to the occasion? Of course. <laughs> I need to stop with the Harry Potter ref ref references. The Elementalist, Chapter 13, Into the Woods. Ah, that's not a reference. I thought, it was, I thought I meant it lives in the woods. Wait, after stopping by the medical ward to grab Becketh, you and your friends rush to the wood nymph grove deep in the forest. Here's an idea. Why don't you guys go there and then check on Becketh? I mean, why did you... You just went to the medical, medical thing, and... <sighs> I don't get it. And arrived to find it torn apart. Oh my goodness. Oh god. Trees lay uprooted on the ground, their branches snapped and broken around them. Whispers of pain echo through the woods, filling you with despair. I know I saw Cain do this through my branching, but I, but I hoped it wasn't real. Asha's face falls in tears, fill her eyes. As she takes in this destruction, Shreya hurries to her side and wraps, wraps an arm around her shoulders. There must be something we can do, some way we can help. I don't know, this seems a little big for, big, even us, even for us. Just then, a nearby tree groans, its trunk collapsed on the forest floor. Chunks of bark have been ripped from its body and sap leaks out of the holes. She's hurt. If we can't get, can't get, her, get her roots back to the ground, she'll, she could either way. Then we don't have any time to waste. Begeth, step clear for, away from this debris. Beckett hobbles forward, rubbing at his temples as he squints around the clearing. Alright, just give me a moment. Beckett magic, magic pulls the br broken branches littering the ground out of the way, while Griffin digs out a patch of soft dirt. Trea, I can lift her up, but with all this damage, I'm worried she'll snap in half. She, needs, she just needs a bit more restoration, the same type of magic we've done to Kanto's class. Then the two of us can handle it. Handle that. Alistair places her hand on the tree trunks, channeling her magic into it. Don't worry, my friend. We'll We're here. We're here now. We'll help you. Pull out the set. Hmm. Let's get all this nasty gunk out of you. Hold on. Cutting my nail. You channel your magic into the sap, pulling it out of the putting it out of the holes along the tree's trunk. The tree creaks in, pro in protest and Oster waves her hands to stop you. Izzy, what are you doing? This, this sap is trying to heal her. Oh, 
sorry. We need to be more move quickly before this gets any worse. Let's get her back on her feet. And those roots back in the ground. Air swirls around Atlas and Tria, then lifts the trees up right before setting setting it gently back down. And here's a drink. I bet you're thirsty after all that. Zef sends a stream of water into the ground, and the tree swallows. And the tree slowly anchors itself, standing on its own. We did it. We save her. But the rest of the forest. What are you doing here? Has your magic hurt this forest enough? What? 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 You turn to see Oscar's father. Chunks of bark torn from his face and arms, and the trunk from a fallen tree mere inches from him. Oscar rushes to his side. We came right here after the tree showed me, showed me what Cain did. Please, sir, we want to help. If there's anything we can do. No. It is I who will protect our people. Yara closes his eyes and magic swirls through his branches, causing them to shake. His forehead creases, more of his bark chipping off, and the magic dies out around it. The grove, the grove is too badly it hurts. My magic alone isn't strong enough to fix it. The wails of the trees grow louder, and the forest darkens in despair. There must be something we can do. A potion could we can brew, or a spell, or forget, or, f or a spell, or forgetting. We can't give up. You're right. We just have to start with the nymphs here. Then we'll st worry about the trees. The rest. You all, you all begin to channel your magic, and the ground around you slowly sprouts fresh grass. The, gre the green extending out to his... To out to the nearby trees. The rest of us should... We just need to get you stood... <sighs> you stood back up. You send your magic into the air around you, gently lifting the fallen trees up until they're floating, while Becketh waves his hand to rotate them until their trunks are planted firmly under the ground. Easy. Hold them steady. Anything. We don't want to accidentally drop them. Asha gives you a nod as the trees dip back into the soil. Then she turns, turns to look, the, look through the trees' leaves, which are slowly knitting back together. So many twigs have broken loose. We better clear them out now so the new growths can develop properly. As Oster speaks, broken branches lift out of the ground and flo foliage, foliage and float gently down to the ground, to the floor, stacking neatly into a pile. Forest brightens, light streaming in, but whispers on the wind still cry out in pain. We've helped these nymphs, but I don't think it's enough. Oster stumbles suddenly, her eyes filling with dark with darkness as she branches. I can I can feel every tree in the forest. If you combine your attuned magic with mine, I think my restoration magic can reach everyone at once. Then we'll give you everything we've got. You and your friends gather around Oster as she takes a deep breath. She digs her feet into the dirt and begins to channel. You pour all your magic into her. She closes her eyes in concentration, and the veins on her face begin to glow. We'll take the pain away, I promise. She grits her teeth, and the light grows brighter and brighter until it fills the ground, the growth. When it clears, the forest has been restored to its previous state. Aster pulls you all into a massive group hug, beaming. We did it. We actually did it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I couldn't have done this without all of you. We were just following your lead. Attuned. You actually... This is incredible. Yarrow looks slowly around the clearing. 
opening his eyes wide as he takes in the heel grove. Then he clears his throat and turns to look at Oster. We must double check and ensure everyone is unharmed. I'll speak to the saplings. Oster, please look at the elders. Look to the elders. I'll be back shortly, everyone. But don't go away. The elders will want to thank you for healing them once they've had a moment of, to recover. After all the energy we exerted, I think we'll need a break anyway. We'll just wait here until you're done. As Oster darts off into the woods, you and your friends sail onto the forest floor. Beckett kneels down, pressing his palm to the to the crushed grass. Grow. Short grass immediately grows taller and thicker, coming up to your ankles. Beckett, what are you doing? Beckett turns turns to a twisted vine, placing a finger on it so it gently curls, spreading out along the forest floor. <sighs> I'm fixing some of the smaller plants that our magic doesn't seem to have healed. You take a look around and notice plants ripped from the ground and torn apart from the force of a strong wind. Yeah, Kane really did a number on this place. I was actually thinking we could take a walk through the nearby wind. Oh shoot, sorry. I hit, hit it by accident. Since I'm not feeling quite better, I could use your, use your help considering all the pain the attuned have cause. It's the least we could do. Well, wow, I guess it means a lot to me. I had no idea. I want to start making up for the one wars and show that we care about the future. The only way we do the only way to do that is through our actions. No. Nope. Winners might get angry if we go running through their woods. After all, they weren't even thrilled that it was the first time we came to the grove. Good point. We don't want to upset them, even if we're just trying to help. You and Becca join the rest of your friends and the wait to wait for Oster to return. Eventually, Oster comes hurrying back to you all, grinning. I look in your face, I take it yeah, everyone is alright. There is no permanent damage, and now that the others are feeling better, thanks to your help, they want to officially meet you. Already? But I haven't even begun to figure out what to say or or what to ask. Or any prayers for making sure we make a good impression with the elders. You're my friends, I'm sure they'll love you. Just be yourselves. That doesn't make that doesn't usually work out for me. I'm apparently too harsh, rude, scary. Then try not to say anything that could upset them. Remember that we care a lot about our families. And no fire magic of any kind. The elders would prefer wood magic, since it's close to our own. Guess I better keep my attunement secret then. Just for one day, Shreya? It's just for one day, Shreya. Octa leads you further into the wood, into the grove where your where her father awaits the trees, seem to lean in closer as you approach. Hello everyone. I like to meet my friends. They've been helping me out at schools all year. Oster introduces you all and you give a hesitant wave to the surrounding trees. It's a pleasure to meet you. You have done a great service to the Grove, and even if, if I do not trust you, we must honor that by helping you in your quest. But first, despite my warnings, the, el the other elders wish to speak with you further. A nearby tree bends a man like branch, placing it on Oster's shoulders as he whispers. You want them to show you their magic? But they, but didn't they just do that when they helped heal you? The magic we felt was channeled through you, Oster. Let us see what their magic looks like without your guidance. We're more than happy to dem to offer a demonstration. 
No. Messina, you hold out your hand to a nearby bush and, bush and respond pours out all the, the small ball of it flings into your hand, which you hold out in front of you. That's precisely how we make candy. Anthony, how did you know? Well, in class, we learned Rescent has tons of uses. It has healing properties. It's super sticky, so you can use it to hold stuff together. And when you harden it, it becomes incredibly hard to break, making it useful for protection. I am impressed with your knowledge of Rescent. I thought most attuned had only studied destructive magic. What other questions do you have for us elders? Trees rustle and shake, and Oster looks up in surprise. They want to know why you wish to befriend them. They are coming they are coming to their senses and beginning to suspect that you have ulterior motives. Please explain why you seek our friendship. Oster's our friend and we care about her. We know how much it hurts her it's hurt her to be be apart from all of you. We just want her to be happy, and we knew that wouldn't happen unless we all got along. Everyone, thank you. I... It seems you generally care for my daughter, Attuned. For that, I am grateful. Whispering, pass, whispering passes between the trees, and the forest brightens light streaming in the canopy, from the canopy. Yes, Attunement can be used for a great and many wonderful things. It's not so different from our own magic. We'd love to show you more if you want us to. A root pushes up out of the ground in front of you and, press, and presents a clay jar which oozes with a thick dark liquid presented to you into your hand. What's the sap? Uh, thanks, but what exactly is this stuff? It feels nice, actually. That's Rex. That's Rodaxium sap. Redaxium? Sounds like a made up metal thing. It comes from the oldest nymph in our grove, and it has special healing properties. You can't just give that to them, not after all the pain they've, they have caused. Suddenly, you hear a strange rustling, and a branch drops onto your shoulder. You roll around to see an elder nymph right behind you, its body already a thick tree trunk and its arms and head still distinguishable. Whoa! Whoa! It's Groot! <laughs> it's Groot! It's Groot! My mic... My mic went off. Sorry. But what I was saying is... It's Groot. <laughs> it's Groot. It's Groot. It's Groot. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's continue. It's Groot. What? Grandfather Toxus. The elder trees whisper fill the air. Their branches shaking and sending leaves shatter scattering about the forest floor. What are they saying? My grandfather's telling Papa to open his eyes and see how you helped heal the grove. He wants Papa to trust my judgment. I am trying to look after my daughter. Just because these attuned have done one good deed doesn't mean... What? Yao's eyes go wide and he looks over at Aster who turns away. Is that true, Oster? Have I driven you away from your own family? Your very roots? It's not that. It's just sometimes it feels like you don't believe in me. Oster would never give up on her family, sir. She loves you all too much. But this? Can't you see it's hurting her? Toxis turns his head toward you, his bark creaking and groaning. His voice rumbles out from deep within him. 
Forgive me, Attuned. The last time I spoke your tongue, my roots were nimbled, and my branches young. But I want to—I want you to hear what I say. Yarrow, Asa's kindness will make her a great leader. You must allow her to become one in her own way. I thought I could protect the grove from the attuned poisons, but my anger has only wilted our roots anyway. I'm sorry, Aster. I should have listened to you. I was so worried that I didn't consider what you wanted. Can you ever forgive me? Of course I can, Papa. I know you were just trying to protect me. Yeah, and also trying to kill us for be trespassing. Aster runs over to him and throws her arms around his trunk. The two embrace, and as they break apart, Yarrow looks at you. We'll look after Asta. I said Asta. It's Aster. It seems you already have been, Anthony. You have been there for her when I was not. I'm here to learn and grow and standing by your side even through tragedies like today's. That's what friends do. They take care of each other. Exactly. Then I am grateful my daughter stumbled across such devoted people. Tox's branches touches yours, touches your shoulder again, and you turn to face him. Anthony, I wish you to I wish to offer you a gift for your help. A wand made from my own branches. A wand made from the branches of an elder will be quite powerful. They're especially useful for focusing a person's magic. I bet that'll help you channel. I bet that'll help you help you channel your refractionary magic and keep it under control. Doc, I can't accept that. After everything that happened in the wand wars. And wait, if wood nymphs can create wands, why did the attuned burn burn down the forest in the first place? A wand is a symbol of trust, and as such, it is a slow process to make one. You must give me time to finish yours. But while you wait, I'd like to show you what the wars were like. Then you will understand why so many here resisted you, and what great fate I have in you. To bestow this gift. See first hand to see a first hand account of the wand wars from the wood nymph. Most texts would only include the detuned side of the story. What he means to say is that if you wish to share these stories with us, we be, we will happily listen. And there is still room for happy stories too. I know many tales of Oster when she was a sapling. I bet I bet little Oster was so was precious. I was a very cute baby, but I'm certain Oster would give me some competition. She'll certainly have more leaves than a baby, Treya. Learn more about Oster's childhood and the wand wars from Toxis, and get a wand to make your magic stronger. Well... I want my, I want my own wand, so... <laughs> Come on, everyone. There's a beautiful view up you from up here. Asher grabs onto one of Toxic's branches and climbs up his trunk. The rest of you follow follow her up. As you make yourself comfortable in the branches, you look over you look out over a beautiful wood wood. The leaves the trees leaves practically glowing in the afternoon, in the afternoon sun. That's why I think this place can't get any more, more amazing. I see where you get your taste from, Oster. The view is truly inspiring. It's hard to imagine all the suffering that took place here. Ways be a downer, Griffin. I am Groot. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. He looks exactly like Groot, only his face seems more human. Anyway, that is why it is important to remember those stories, so they would not repeat. So they will not be repeated. You children will move us into a brighter future. 
Consciousness branches surround you, all your, you all, and your vision goes white as you pull into his branch ring. Sapling. Suddenly, you're suddenly in the sapling grove, tending to grass and encouraging it to grow. When two humans approach. Finally, after months and months of tireless searching, we found another one. You take a wary step toward careful step forward, carefully watching them. Through you, through you, through you, offer a smile. Greetings, attuned. What business do you have in our grove today? Don't foot play the fool, nymph. You know quite well we what we have come here for. I'm sure we can come to some agreement, some arrangement. I have many items in my shop that may interest you. And if it's and if it's what ones you wish for, I can grow some for you. It will simply take a bit of time. Why in the hell would we wait when we when we can just take what we des what we desire? He is made of wood. Look, we will just burn him like the rest of the f this forest. Their hands glow with flames, and they fling at the saplings, which instantly catch fire. Don't worry, young ones. I won't let them harm you. No matter swirls around the young nymphs, beginning to sip full of flames. If you wish to burn alongside them, be my guest. The flames. The fire flames up again, becoming too hot for you to control. You reach out to shield a freshly sprouted sapling. Then, when a wave of fire strike, strikes you, charring your bark. Better stay away, stick man. Your wood's too old to be of a use to us. But we will be taking this young, young spry wood to make our wands. You struggle back from the f from the heat of the flames as the saplings begin to wail, their thick their thin trunks thrashing, and all you can do is watch in horror. By the time the two flee, only burnt only burnt and broken saplings remain. You drop to your knees on the ashy ground just as Yarrow arrives. No, oh, father, they didn't. I never thought it would happen here. They burnt them all. I couldn't stop them. It would take years for them to heal and heal and regrow. Years before they will there before we'll hear their rustling leaves or see them grow bright in the autumn winds. Yara kneels down beside you, brushing his fingers through the dirt as anger overtakes his face. They will pay for this. As your vision returns, you shudder the smell of burnt wood and the sound of the forest crying out, still fresh in your mind. They just destroyed parts of the forest and took what they wanted, didn't care who they were hurting. Some people will do anything for power, like Cain. Papa told me the, about the horrors of the wars, but to see it, but to see it, it was terrible. Your tomb's actions that day turned your father against them. He was even wary of Grey Garden and Waste's proposal to end the world. Dean Waste got involved? Yes, the treaty were, were broken gave the, gave the grove gave the grove protections and allowed us to regrow. It also banned the tomb from creating wands. That decline in production must have been uh, when wands fell out of use in school and workplaces. Yes, the treaty kept buildings and humans separate, but I knew someday we could we could come together again, the way people did in my shop. But there too, but there are, but there too, but there too are happy stories in the past. Seeing new life fill the grove, watching Oster grow. Alright, you promised to tell us stories about baby Oster. Where to begin? The Lee Society and her adoration of an old photo album from the shop and the first 
time she f left the grove. She always wanted to see the world. Finally, her mother took her to the fake gardens, and her laughter was l so loud, I fear she'd lose her lease. It was one of, was one of the best days of my life. Uh, excuse me. Actually stepping into a new place, not just seeing it through another tree's eyes. It was amazing. And let me guess, they loved you immediately. Not exactly. I was perhaps too excited about finding out more about their lives. I'm pretty sure I scared them them all away. I can't actually imagine any anyone being afraid of you, Oster. You're way too sweet. And we wouldn't say no to an, an introduction. I'd be happy to add meet a fay onto my onto my bucket list. Asta was such a cute child, always blooming when she when excited. One time she saw a porygon, and all of her flowers turned to, turned the same color. Grandfather, you're embarrassing me. Oh, now you say something. It seems both their families have a, have a pent a penchant for recounting ridiculous childhood tales. Hang on, are you telling me I could have? Have have asked Katrina for humiliating stories about you. Bet you read mentioning that one, don't you, Harrington? About when Oster was born, what was she like? She poked her first few stems out of the ground. It was a beautiful golden flower. The whole grove was full of warm light. It believed whatever magic a wood nymph does. When they first spout the house, what type of person they'll be. That's kind of how I tune feel about oh, our two months. Parents spend weeks analyzing what their kids might be. Which is why my parents always knew, knew they had to be had a clever, ambitious fighter on their hands. I was making sparks as soon as I could move. It was much the same with Oster. We always knew she would guide our paths and help us grow, just as the sun does. Sounds like we have a lot more in common than I realize, Oster. We both have an infinity for warmth and light. It is a gift to see through the eyes of all trees, to watch our children and grandchildren grow up. And now, Anthony, your wand is ready. Well, uh, finally. The nearby branch lowers it, it lowers until it's right in front of you, presenting an elegantly carved wand. That looks awesome. Can't believe he's killed. Uh, how do you use it exactly? Have you seen a wizarding movie? I wish it's just that you simply have to think about what you wish to do and channel your magic. Why don't you just give it a wave and see what it does? Are you sure that's safe? Ignoring Griffin, you raise your wand and swish through the air and, bur and a burst of refractionary magic surrounds you. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Bogus. As you sweep, and you sweep the wand, your magic follows, casting the hills in a brilliant glow wherever you point. I've never seen a wand used before. It's beautiful. It's like you've made your very own rainbow, Anthony. Oh, I cannot wait to test this baby out. You put the wand away, and Toxus gives you a tired smile. Now I must rest, but thank you, Anthony, and all your friends. I hope we meet again someday. I'd like that. I'm sure you've got way more stories to share. As you all begin to descend the tree, and the tree, Asa turns to you with a soft smile. Take a quick walk with me. I want to enjoy the forest air just a bit longer. A walk sounds like the perfect way to unwind. Asa leads you away from the grove 
to a secluded section of the woods. She brushes her fingers along the bushes as she walks. Today has been a lot to absorb. King kidnapped you and then attacked the grove, and now grandfather's given us a glimpse of what a, what the wand wars were like. But we've beaten the trouble we face, haven't we? You got me. You got me back from Cain. We healed the grove. And Papa is even willing to get to know you all. Exactly, I exactly. I'd say it been I say it's been a pretty successful day, all things considered. Now we just have to find Gemma and take down Cain. Then everything will go back to normal, right? I hope so. Alter takes your hand, giving it a gentle squeeze, you meet her eyes which sparkle with affection. I'm with Shreya. Why can't people just recognize that? You pull Oscar into a tight hug, wrapping your arms around her. She returns to her embrace, resting her head on your shoulder. I know it sounds a lot easier than it actually will be. I don't seem so convinced we can do this, but I still don't see how Atlas and I are going to beat Kane. Even with them as Gemma's help. Whatever happens, Anthony, we'll face it together. Thanks, Oster. At least I've still got pen pals. Oster gives you a final squeeze before letting go. She places her hand on your shoulder and pats it. Now we should get back to the others. We don't want them to think we're, we've gone missing. Oster takes a deep breath, a smile lighting up her face. Thanks for doing this. I know it meant a lot to my grandfather, getting to talk with my friends. It was surprisingly fun. He seems like a really cool guy, and I got this cool one out of it. As you return, as you and your friends return over to Yarrow to say goodbye, he turns his head towards you, towards you and not. You have done much for the Grove. I intend to repay that by aiding you on your in your quest, Oster. Place your hand on Nathie's shoulders. Oster places a hand on your shoulder, and Yaros reaches forward to place his top. His is his on top. Your vision goes white as you're pulled into their branching. The girl you've been searching for, this is where she's being kept. FINALLY! FINALLY! Looks like a haunted house, though. Bright lights flare from inside, then go out, leaving darkness. A face peeks out through the boarded-up window. It's Gemma! As, and you're wrenched back out of the vision, with a clear picture of where you need to go. Thank you so much, Mr. Du. This was just what we needed. The Rider of the Wind also left with us with this with a message for you. The clock is ticking. If you don't hurry, your most cher most cherished will burn. Then we better get going before Cain can make another move. Thanks again for all your help. You and your friends rush back through the forest. We have to get to Gemma before Cain can hurt anyone else. Anthony, why don't you use your presence to check on her? We can't afford to, afford to show her up there un, unprepared. Right, just give me a moment, and uh, don't stare at me. It makes me nervous. Close your eyes, letting the rest of the world fade away as you focus. Let's see how Gemma's doing. And suddenly, you're within the safe house, you spot Gemma on the floor screaming as, as bright light flares off of her, filling the room. Who are you? Don't come any closer. The house begins to rock violently, tipping over furniture, and Gemma curls up even tighter as another wave of magic rolls off her, coming right for you. The red slams into you, and pain starts to flood your senses as your vision goes white. Eyes fly open and your friends back in the woods you're surrounding you. Gemma's powers are going haywire. She attacked me. 
Though I don't think she meant to. How does she look? Was she okay? She looked hurt. She was in a lot of pain. And if it's anything like what you and you and I went through, through when our magic was out of control, then we need to get to her quick. All right, let's go. But what do we do? There's no way we'll get to her fast enough. The portal magic I used to save you earlier should work, though it will take a few minutes to get ready with this many of us. As Beckett steps aside to begin casting the spell, Alice walks over to you with a stern expression on his face. Harrington said the portal will take time, so let's use that to our advantage. There's a spell you need to know before we fight Gemma. It combines sun and moon magic to heighten your senses. Heighten your senses? You mean it'll make my hearing better? It'll do way more than that. Let me show you. Sensoria. Guess I need to write this down. Alice claps his hand together. <laughs> Excuse me. Claps his hands together. There and closes his eyes. Before calling out to your friends. Someone throw, throw a rock at me. Prevents exchange a look before Zeph bends down. He picks up a rock and her it at at Atlas. Atlas whirls around, catches the rock in his hand, never opening his eyes. That was so cool. If I knew that spell, Kane wouldn't be able to sneak up on me and I mean, like he did today. You'll also make it harder for him to hit you because you'll sense his mad his attacks coming from a mile away. This will definitely come in handy, of course. <laughs> like Ultra Instinct Goku. I'm willing to do anything that will give us an give us an edge. Good. We're going to start out using Moon in order to get fully in tune with your body. Don't you mean fully att attuned to your body, to our body? Ever since you are glare before straightening up and taking a deep breath. Channel your magic up from your chest into your head. You need to have a complete understanding of your body for this to work. If you want to, if you want your senses to absorb more f information, they need to con they need a continuous magical boost. Your channel, you channel your magic into your head, letting the worry and exhaustion of the day settle over you. It's making my head feel all tingly. Now take that all that energy inside you and spread it into, into the world while saying "Sensoria." Sensoria, push your magic into the world around you, and your vision blurs for a moment. Where everything comes back into sharp focus, and you make out every details you've never seen before. Oh wow! I can hear, I can hear Beckett whispering to himself down down the path, and there's a ladybug right on that leaf over there. But let's see if you can keep an eye on me. As it starts into the trees, moving faster than you've ever seen him before, and yet your eyes easily fall in. He weaves through the brambles, finally crouching behind a large leafy bush. You're in the bushes, Atlas. The one with the big purple flower right next to it. Then I'm pretty sure I see a squirrel climbing up or climbing the tree behind you. Atlas stands up and comes back over to you, brushing the dirt off his palms. Nice work. That should help you dodge anything that gets thrown at you. But can my super sentence explain why you're actually smiling for once? Very funny. Alright. Only one more spell left. I mean the last book in the last book of this I didn't get I didn't complete all of them. You and your friends gather around Beckett as he puts the final touches to his portal spell. A large m magical oval swirling in the air in front of him. 
Now just picture the outside of the safe house in, in your mind. You, so I can collaborate the portals to take us there. Begley places a hand on your shoulder and you close close your eyes, recalling the on the vision Yarrow and Oster shout, showed you. As you open your eyes, you as you see the outside of the safe house through the portal, you look around at your friends. This is it, pen pals. Let's go rescue Gemma. You give them a final nod before slipping through the portal, your vision going white as you're whisked away. Here we go. Lights flare through the boarded up windows and the ground beneath your feet gives you a violent shake as your friends step out behind. It's already started. We need to get in there before she brings the whole house down on top of herself. Couldn't she have just waited another five minutes? You and Jeff rushed was forward only to be thrown it back by back as the, as you run into an invisible barrier. The place is still warded. We have to take them down before we can get in. I can weaken the wars closing the door, but someone will have to blast them blast them the rest of the rest of the way apart. Leave it to me. Becca twists his hands shimmering field kneeled on the door, beginning to dissipate. As Shreya launches a fireball right at it, there's a flash of silver light and the ward dissolves. Come on, Gemma's going to need all of our help. As you burst through the door, you're suddenly over overwhelmed by the strong magic radiating through the space, your own flaring up in response. Atlas, I'm losing control. No, you're not. We can handle this. You take a deep breath, re reigniting in your power, and Alice does the same at your side. Then you spot Gemma on the other side of the room, curled up against the wall as the house gives as a violent shake. Who are you? Don't come any closer. As she speaks, a massive wave of magic rolls off of her, setting the furniture in the room flying around you. All around you. Your magic slams into you, and hot white pain spreads across your chest. As you stumble backwards, Anthony, we need to calm her down. Then she, can, then she should be able to get control of her powers. Time for some super senses. Sitsuri, Sitsuria. I'm gonna burst from my man as you channel your magic before everything comes into sharp focus. A table goes soaring right toward your head, and you duck just in time. That would have hurt. I didn't mean to. Gemma gasps in pain and curls up even further, flares of magic sparking off her. Off her. Ace and Navi appear from the ether, taking both, both your sides. Gemma's eyes go wide. Lily, you're all right. Navi leaps protectively in front of Atlas. Gemma reaches out toward her, but her magic flares up again and sends a bookshelf flying at you. You've all had enough flying for one day. You hold up your hands, and the furniture halts, floating calmly in the air. You gently lower pieces back onto the floor. Nice one. I sold you when I get squished by an old, by an old dirty, by a dirty old couch. Nobody nudges the wall with her nose, and with a burst of magic, a layer of ice coats the surface, sealing the cracks. A cold of ice surrounds Ace as she, as he rushes around the room. It freezes the furniture and the floor. And I don't think it's going anywhere after that. Gemma looks around, a bit of the wild magic around her fading. How did you do that? If we get closer to her, we might be able to suppress some of this magic. You and Alice hurry across the room, your friends right behind you. As you approach, Gemma holds up her hands. No, I won't let you hurt me. Alice begins to shake again, and the ceiling above you cracks, dust filling the room, pieces of the root of the roof start 
to collapse, just missing you as they fall. We gotta get, we got, we've got, we've got to get her to stop, or we'll, we're all going to get killed. You handle that. We'll keep the roof from falling on us. Hey, Navi, can you give me a boost? Come on, it's alright. You just need to breathe. Take a deep breath and turn your magic into the ground, quelling constant shaking. See? You, you can control it, just like I did. But at first, you have to calm down. I'm, I'm trying, but it hurts. I know it might feel like it, but that magic doesn't rule you. It's a part of you. The first step to control is acknowledging that. You and Alice take a step forward, slowly approaching Gemma. She shrinks back, her whole body shaking as magic swirls around her. Stay away. The rock, the house rocks violently, and you nearly lose your footing. Gemma curls up even higher, tight, even tighter, as another wave of magic rolls off her, and a piece of the roof comes free. It drops right on top of Gemma, crushing her beneath it. Gemma, I'll get it off her. Elle shifts the debris off of Gemma, revealing her crumbled form. Still, still glowing, her arms are already starting to bruise, and there's a gash across her shoulder. It hurts. You pulled the Rexium sap that the wood nymphs gave, gave you out of your bag and dip your fingers into it. You hesitantly reach out and drip this the sap over a bruise is on her arm and then the gash on her shoulder. This has healing properties. It should help. Whoa. A wave of warmth green of warm green magic washes over you and bruise and the bruising slowly fade away. And the gash knits back together. Hi. I feel better. Gemma, we know what you're going through. Our powers were doing the same thing. Yours yours are. If we can get if we can get control of them, so can you. Nari bounces forward and Gemma's gaze softens. Navi nuzzles against Gemma's foot with her nose. Lily, I missed you. Her name's Lily. But what do I but what do you want from me? Remember who you are. You're the Earth Source. We have, we have to reseal Cain to stop him from destroying the world, just like before. I don't know what you're talking about. You're scaring me, Misty. Maybe we should leave the for Alma to tell her. We don't know what she could, what could happen. She could turn into her true self and kill us all. Shut it, Seth. Gemma, you don't have to remember anything. Not right now. We're going to get you out of here, I promise. But we can't do that until your powers stop flaring up. You know, closes her eyes for a moment and the magic around her fades. She comes forward, tears in her eyes. I thought I'd never get out of here. I'm Atlas and this is my brother, Anthony. We'll protect you from here on out. So, how about we get going? I'm sure you don't want to stay another minute. You take another step forward and kneel in front of Gemma. You reach out, and just as you touch her shoulder, her magic fills the whole room with a bright orange light, and she screams. Please make it stop. She looks desperately at you and Atlas, and she collapses, laying lifeless on the ground. Oh, Gemma, stay with us. Is she okay? Ah, man. I don't know what to say about this, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to my channel, share this with your friends, comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, excuse me, hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video.